is a very brief presentation as to why you are not a person. To understand how it all works, you first need to understand how contracts work. So a living man or a living woman can contract with another living man or a living woman. A corporation can contract with another corporation. A corporation cannot contract with a living man or a living woman or vice versa. The government, which is formed of the, the Crown, the UK, the City of London, the police, social services, they're all profit-making corporations. So how is this corporation telling living men and women what to do? The way they do it is they set up what's called a legal fiction. So when you were born, unbeknownst to your parents, they registered your birth. So Joanne of the family blocks, who is the living woman or living baby at that time, became Miss Joanne Bloggs, surname in capitals, a corporation. That is a person. In 1862, the definition of person was changed to mean corporation. It's part of the legalese trickery. So now, the government, the corporation, can now contract with the legal fiction corporation of Joanne Bloggs, in capitals, the person. If you look at letters, fines, etc., that come through the post, you'll see there'll be different variants, but some or all of your name will be in capitals. Those are the various corporations that are set up in your name in order for the government to contract with you. So in order to contract with you, they impose rules, licenses, fines, bills, taxes, regulations. They are all contracts between the corporation of the government and the corporation of your legal fiction. For a contract to be valid, there are certain rules that need to be abided by. Firstly, the parties must be competent to contract. So they must be of the age of consent. They must be mentally able and they must be free to contract between legal or lawful entities. There must be free and genuine consent. So that consent has not been obtained by fraud, deceit, coercion or mistake. There must be full disclosure, providing all material information that may influence a decision on both parties' behalves. There must be valuable consideration, so something of value needs to exchange between both parties. There needs to be certainty of terms. Those terms and conditions are fixed and they're unable to be changed without agreement. There must be a meeting of minds. So when those parties recognise and comprehend their obligations. There must be signatures or autographs in wet ink as recorded evidence of reciprocal consent. If the contract is between a living man or a living woman and another living man or living woman, then it's an autograph. If a person is signing on behalf of their legal fiction, it's a signature. And there must be privity of contract, so that contract cannot be sold on to a third party. So there you have it. You as the living soul are not your legal fiction. You are not a person. However, you act on behalf of your legal fiction. So you choose what contracts you want to enter into. In common law, the laws are simple. You cause no harm, loss or injury to another living soul or their property. There's no threat of harm, loss or injury. And you're honourable in all your dealings. So let's look at the definition of crime. It is defined as an act 
committed in violation of a law. Hmm. It's unlawful activity and it's a serious offence. So if you've forgotten to get insurance on your car or you've forgotten to sawn it and you get sent a fine, who have you caused harm, loss or injury to? It's not actually breaking a law. It's breaking a rule. Those rules only apply to persons. If you look at every single piece of legislation that's been issued by the government, by Parliament, it only applies to person. You will not find the word man or woman in there because they cannot impose it on living souls. So think to yourself, where is the victim? So your legal fiction becomes a member of the society of the UK corporation. So you have to follow the rules of that society. Well, your legal fiction does. Let's look at this with a different perspective. You have a Tesco club card, for example. As a club card holder, you are a member of the Society of Club Card Holders. So Tesco's have just announced that they've come up with a new rule. You can only eat on a Wednesday if you eat in a Tesco's cafe. You have a club card. Their board has scrutinised and ratified the rule, so you've got to do what they say. Do you? No, you're not your club card. By the same token, you are not your legal fiction. However, you can't just ignore something that's been imposed on you. If you don't respond, i.e. if you exercise your right to silence, which is another trick by the way, it's considered tacit acceptance. You must rebut. You have to state that what they're saying is not true. So if you need to rebut face to face, so say for example, a police officer is trying to impose a fine on you. That fine is a, an invitation to contract. That's how you have to look at it. So all you say is, I do not consent. I do not wish to contract with you. I do not answer questions. You need to stick to the script because legalese has taken so many of the common English words and turned them against us in order to trip and trap us. So for example, the police officer will say to you, do you understand? And that means, do you agree to stand under my authority? You would think to yourself, yeah, I understand what you're saying. And so you say, yes, you've just contracted. You've just done what's called create joinder. You don't want to do that. So stick to the script. I do not consent. I do not wish to contract with you. I do not answer questions. That is your rebuttal face to face. If you get something in the post, again, you need to rebut it. Do it in writing, respond within three days, and you can rebut with conditional acceptance, which pretty much says, okay, you want to find me 90 pounds for parking in the wrong place. Prove to me that we had a contract, that I agreed to the terms of that contract. Prove to me that me, as a living man or a living woman, am liable because actually, they're fine in your legal fiction, not you. So don't let the corporations gray the simple understanding of the law. Everything other than common law is contract. Of course, if you do actually break a law and create a victim, so you do cause harm, loss or injury or threat, to another living man or woman, then you are breaking the law and they are able to deal with you in that way. But everything else, that is contract. 
Thank you for listening and being a living soul. Stand in your power. You are free. You are not a person.